Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great uh, privilege and an honor to have such a distinguished gathering in this hall. Our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi's firm belief and conviction is that efficient mobility drives economic growth, creates skills and jobs, and gives a better quality of life to the citizens. Hence, designing a holistic mobility policy framework has to be a key strategic objective for both the world and India. As a run-up to this summit, the Prime Minister has made us work with all the states, all the 36 states and union territories, with all the ministries, private sector, all the engineering institutions. One thing comes out loud and clear, mobility is in the midst of a major global disruption. And in this, as we move from internal combustion engine to electric, shared and connected mobility, in this summit we look at skills and jobs, technological developments, data analytics, battery and storage, the sharing and the connected world, fuels and green modes of transportation, and issues varying from walking and cycling to the new goal set by the Honorable Prime Minister of making Indians mobile in outer space. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a digital exhibition outside. We would request all of you to kindly see of the kind of transition that is taking place. With these few words, may I take this opportunity of inviting the distinguished Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog to kindly welcome this August gathering. Respected Prime Minister, Honorable Ministers, Honored Guests and CEOs from abroad, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, it's indeed my proud privilege to welcome you all on behalf of Niti Ayo and the Government of India to this first Global Mobility Summit that we are organizing uh, here on, under the directions of the Honorable Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, this Global Summit signals India's commitment to seize the multifaceted opportunities that are being thrown up by modern mobility and, and the global disruption that it is causing. It also reflects our effort to play an effective role in using modern mobility for shaping a more eco-friendly and more people-friendly global future. India will play a major role in shaping the global mobility movement going forward. I have been fascinated, ladies and gentlemen, uh, by, the, by the Prime Minister's sweep and enormity of vision combined with his eyes to detail and his directions have been immaculate uh, to us. Thank you, sir, for that. And thank you also for giving Niti this opportunity for leading the country in this innovative journey going forward. Sir, you had directed us to make sure that this summit was a culmination of substantive work, and this is shown in our collaborative preparation, which has gone on for months, involving all the stakeholders, industry, academia, government ministries, think tanks, and we have received very active cooperation and inputs from our, from our sort of intellectual partners like IIT Mumbai, IIT Delhi, IIT, uh, IIT um, uh, Chennai, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Institute of Science, World Research Institute, TERI, ORF, BCG, World Bank, and Intel, with whom we are signing, we have just signed the first international uh, center for transformative artificial intelligence. The results, Honorable Prime Minister, are in the five papers that we presented to you very shortly by their own authors. We have also engaged with all the relevant ministries and all 36 states and union territories, and the result of that, the substantive result of that, is 22 state action plans which will be presented to the summit uh, tomorrow. So the overwhelming response from the corporate startups, uh, the you know, young people, have been just, just tremendous. And that just shows that the, your, the timing of your vision was perfect. 
So we've had 5,000 more plus registrations. We have 30,000 entries for our hackathon. 30 teams participated in this for two days. We have had a pitch to move where 286 uh, startups uh, participated. We have 17 substantive events from the 1st to the 6th of September, including a technology conference, science and technology conference at IIT Delhi on the 1st of September. So we will make sure that this work is followed up and, uh, and, and this commit represents therefore a midpoint in our preparation and the work going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, finally I just have to say that the objective of this global summit is to really learn from all of you who are assembled here and who have come from all over the world and who are such specialists, domain specialists in your own fields. And we want to learn, ladies and gentlemen, for India to be able to leapfrog into the front lines of mobility, to be able to generate good quality, large number of jobs, and to improve the ease of living of our people in this country. Thank you very much for being here and welcome to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have a short film to show the critical significance of mobility on the lives of people and how it impacts the world and India. Of all the phenomena that created our world, arguably, mobility is the greatest change maker. Human mobility changed humanity and it is changing our planet. Today, let us take the first steps towards transforming mobility. Our world is increasingly urban and increasingly connected. This offers us a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to plan, develop and manage mobility solutions in an ecologically and economically sustainable manner. This is as much an opportunity as an imperative, because if we don't, if we continue to follow the current trajectory, an ecological resource base as large as four of our blue planets will be required. And alas, we have only one Earth. We need a paradigm shift. We need answers to a fundamental question. How can we effectively harness the opportunity provided by seamless mobility for economic growth and poverty reduction while mitigating its negative effects? Some answers may be emerging where they are needed the most. India, a country whose urban population will double in the next decade, more than half a billion of whose citizens will live, work and travel in her cities. There are opportunities here there are challenges here. And to turn challenges into opportunities, an adequate and holistic infrastructure focus is underway. Rural roads are being built through the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana. Urban roads, national highways and expressways through the Bharat Mala program. Waterways are being developed through the Pradhan Mantri Jal Marg Yojana. Port connectivity is being enhanced via rail, roadways and multimodal logistical parks all through the Sagar Mala program. The common citizen is taking to the air like never before through the Ure Desh Ka Aam Nagrik, the Uran program. India is moving to sunshine and wind to drive the biggest renewable program in the world, a target of 175 gigawatts by 2022, which it aims to surpass. The country has taken the lead in creating the International Solar Alliance of more than 121 countries for the efficient exploitation of solar energy and reducing the dependence on fossil fuels. To ensure future readiness, a series of fundamental steps are being taken. The One Nation One Guard program will be optimizing travel footprint and promoting seamless integration with public transportation. An increased emphasis is being laid on the safety of women and accessibility for the elderly and disabled. Land use integration is being done through master planning and the development of a hundred smart cities. Data-driven measures are being adopted and intelligent traffic management systems being put in place. A major impetus is being given to electric vehicles, clean technology and battery manufacture. 
India has also catalyzed the evolution and growth of pooling, sharing and connected mobility through digital means. A recent study by Morgan Stanley shows that a confluence of trends are transforming India into the fastest growing auto 2.0 market over the next decade. It estimates that almost 50% of the incremental new vehicle sales during 2017-2030 will come from India. A lot of these miles will be electric, shared and connected. India is therefore taking the ambitious challenge of manufacturing clean vehicles and batteries and accelerating the pace of innovation and research and development. As the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi has said, there is need to bring about a paradigm shift in urban planning by adopting a people-centric approach and integrating land use and transport. Bringing the world story to India, taking India's story to the world, accelerating global growth, skills and employment and speeding the world's transition to a clean energy future is the objective of this summit. We will move. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to hear from this galaxy of uh, distinguished global CEOs who have honored us by being present here in this hall. I would only request the distinguished speakers to uh, kindly stick to the time limit as we want to run this conference with automobile-like pressure. Uh, we'll start with a CEO who's been, uh, who's a photographer, has keen interest in filmmaking, he runs the Nanni Kali program, which provides free education to the girls in the country who are economically underprivileged. He also happens to be the executive chairman of the Mahindra Group, Mr. Anand Mahindra. Honorable Prime Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm sure this is not the kind of picture that you were expecting at the start of what is meant to be a high-tech conference. But these joyful young boys perfectly capture, in my opinion, the delights of mobility, the joy of the freedom of movement. And to me, that's what mobility is all about. It's about the joy of the freedom to move. Now, in our times, the exercise of that joy has not been without its problems. And today we are asking ourselves, what kind of mobility should we encourage and what should we leave behind? Because increased awareness about the dangers to our planet, to our health and to future generations is changing the way that we look at mobility. Now when it comes to commuting from point A to point B, the world is going to move dramatically towards ride sharings and fleets. But I don't think that that's what policymakers should be inordinately worrying about. I believe policymakers will be rewarded by focusing on the power of mobility to integrate, include, and transform. And to illustrate that, let me take you back to 19th century India. Before independence, India was a disparate cluster of entities, some under British control, some under the control of native aristocracy, and there was really no concept of one India. Then, with the advent of the railways, for the first time, people across the subcontinent could travel easily, meet their fellow Indians, and evolve common aspirations. So in a sense, the rise of the railways created an inclusive mobility that contributed to the rise of the freedom movement, and ironically, that hastened the departure of the British who brought in that mobility. Today, mobility can become as great an integrative, inclusive, and transformational force as the railways were, an inclusive movement driven by multi-modality. Now, it will be the way by which someone from Kashmir can easily meet up with someone in Kanyakumari. How would we enable this? Now, I know as you saw that Niti Aayog is promoting a one nation, one card for public transport, and I think that's a fantastic idea. And let me, let me build on that. 
What if we were to create a universal app for multimodality? An app that any Indian could hold in the palm of his or her hand. Now let me paint a picture. Brijlal has come to his village of Mahuli outside Patna and now must go back to work in Mumbai. Using the universal app, he looks at multiple options to reach Mumbai. He first boards a shared bullock cart, let's call it Zoom cart, with apologies to Zoom car. That takes him to the nearest Pakka Road. The Universal app has booked him a seat on the electric bus to Patna Junction. He's scheduled to board an electric train. But on the way, he gets an alert from his app telling him he's been upgraded to a flight. The app automatically cancels a ticket. The train ticket sends him to an electric auto rickshaw. He hops on the plane, lands at Mumbai Airport, where an electric pod with two core travelers whizzes each of them to their doorstep. Now the question is, how do we make this happen in India? And I think the answer is to create a digital platform. A digital platform not necessarily in the private sector, but a public-private partnership. A platform managed and governed by an autonomous body with widespread shareholding involving every Indian. And I would suggest we do this before Uber and Google get that idea, and then we are left wondering how to challenge the domination of global giants. Perhaps we should call that app MOVE in honor of today's conference. MOVE, which would be India's inclusive mobility app that can connect all Indians and turn inclusive mobility into a movement. Now, I started with a very simple and quintessentially Indian image of mobility. Let me end with another quintessential Indian image. It's the image of a very simple man. A man who used the power of mobility offered by his own two feet to bring Indians of every persuasion together in a common cause. Ladies and gentlemen, inclusive multimodal mobility too can change our lives. Perhaps today can be the day when we start our own march towards inclusive mobility. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mahindra. Our next speaker is an avid basketball player, has been described as someone who passes the ball around. Uh, his goal is not to make the biggest, but the most loved company in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Vice Chairman of Hyundai, Mr. Chung Yusun. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great, a great pleasure to be here with Honorable Prime Minister of India Sri Narendra Modi, uh, respected dis, uh, uh, dignitaries, and all the participants. India has been taking the steps of a line towards a great future. Prime Minister Modi has brought forth a national blueprint that emphasizes opportunity for everyone from knowledge-based growth uh, to future-oriented infrastructure. I believe India's robust growth is inspirational, especially for those of around the world. The making in India policy is a perfect case in point of the collaboration between public and private sectors. And Hyundai Motor Group is grateful to have joined India as a partner. There are a few facts that comes to my mind when describing India's future, high economic growth rate, a large young population, the world's second largest mobile infrastructure, and a strong IT industry. These represent potential to build on the success of digital India policies and become a global leader of fourth industrial revolution. What exactly does the fourth industrial revolution look like? I believe that core elements are communication, connection, and convergence. The automotive industry is no exception. We should ride this wave of unprecedented change by seeking new possibilities through 
disruptive innovation. The main topics of today's conference, shared, connected, and zero emission mobility, also happen to be the most crucial issues. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a Hyundai Motor Group's vision and goals for the future mobility. I, I would also like to share the journey we have taken in India, and more importantly, the journey we'll embark on to make our vision of reality. The conversation of mobility is rapidly shifting from the automobile-based model to the smart mobility model. This change is taking place because the social costs have been increasing due to accidents, congestion, and air pollution. What can we do to solve this problem? There are two key changes as we shift to the era of smart mobility. First, uh, from a technology standpoint, vehicles are uh, benefiting from rapid improvement in the area of connectivity, electrification, and intelligent safety technologies. Secondly, uh, from a business perspective, the shared economy means that we as automakers are looking into the new ways of doing business. In this context, building relationship with information and communication technology companies and collaborating with governments are becoming more important for us all. As the value chain of the automotive industry has undergone a positive transportation, the rules of game have changed. As a result, Hyundai Motor Group is actively transforming from the car manufacturer to be a smart mobility solution provider. Now I'd like to share with you three pillars of smart mobility strategy. We have the, the first pillar is clean mobility and electrified uh, vehicles are most important components. Hyundai Motor Group is, is fully ready to deliver every type of eco-friendly vehicle, including hybrid vehicle, electric vehicle, and fuel cell electric vehicle. We are offering a wide range of transportation options, fine-tuned to soon maker, market conditions, and meet customer needs. We will launch three economic and smart EVs in the Indian market. This will take a step closer, providing cleaner air for every Hyundai introduced hydrogen-powered SUV, Nexo, and the India-Korean Business Summit. I think a barrier is running uh, frequently, so I, I will make it short. Sorry about that. Uh, we hope to launch Nexo in the Indian market in the near future. A fuel cell electric vehicle is the ultimate eco-friendly vehicle that will change the paradigm of the automobile. It requires nothing more than hydrogen and air for operation, and it purifies air by filtering fine dust along the way. As Prime Minister Modi once said, a, clear, a cleaner environment is an article of faith for us. We will contribute to the government effect to pass along India's beautiful nature and clean air to the next generation. Um, second pillar can be char characterized as freedom in mobility. We aim to provide an environment where more people unlimited access to safe and convenient modes of transportation. We introduced IONIQ autonomous concept already here in the US and India soon. We, of course, we will Im Im implement our innovative technology in accordance with the environmental policy and the socio-economic needs of India. The third and last pillar is connected mobility. Hyundai Motor Group is developing connected car platform that will do car with other device. It will be able to interact seamlessly with other vehicles as well as the outside world, thereby resulting in greater safety and convenience. Our mobility, uh, mobility technology may also contribute to the India's ongoing Armour Smart Cities project. To make it a success, Hyundai has actively spread ahead, initiated by working with members of Indian society. Our goal is to ensure opportunities for the millionaires of India who are already savvy with the digital data and technology. From the beginning of relationship with India, we've been deeply moved by the hospitality and enthusiasm of India. 
Since its establishment in 1996, Hyundai Motor India has grown into a key export hub to more than 90 countries. You may remember the Santro model that we launched back in 1998. We have responded to the local expectation and we have been fortune, fortunate enough to become a popular mobile, mobile in, a manufacturer in India. We take this pride in our work over the years and we are strongly committed to the contributing to the sustainable growth of India. Prime Minister Modi once mentioned the five S's in Hindi, Saman, Samwat, Sayog, Shanti, Samlidik. These key words perfectly capture with all the different values that can help guide us as we work towards building the great future of India. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, government officials, and representatives as well as our partners in the automotive industry for inviting me along on such an exciting journey. Thank you very much. Thank uh, Our next speaker is a person who's responsible for one of India's most loved and trusted automobile partnership. He will speak in Japanese, and I request you all to put on your headset uh, channel 1 is for Hindi, Channel 2 is for English. Uh, in four decades, Mr. Osamu has turned his wife's grandfather's loom-making business into one of the world's biggest automobile company and blazed a trail in the Indian market. He believes in cutting wasteful expenditure and saved his company 40,000 US dollars by removing light bulbs. Mr. Suzuki, please. Good morning, everyone. As I have been introduced, my name is Samu Suzuki, Chairman of Suzuki Motor Corporation. I seek everyone's cooperation. It's my honor and privilege to be here at Global Mobility Summit in the esteemed presence of His Excellency Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. I'm really thankful for the same. Thank you for giving this opportunity to participate in this event. We have been manufacturing automobile in India since 1983, and it's a matter of great pride to us that because of our good quality and fuel efficiency, large number of Indians are using our products as their partner in daily life. Currently, vehicles manufactured in India have achieved nearly 100% localization, and we are proud to have realized make, make in India. So we are proud of this, that we have realized make in India. We have also decided to commence production of lithium-ion battery for automobiles at our battery plant in Gujarat in 2020. And at the same time, we'll continue to dedicate ourselves to the realization of a sustainable mobility society in line with great concept of Make in India. We have decided to launch EV in India around 2020 in cooperation with Toyota Motor Corporation. 
I am pleased to announce today that we will start road running test using fleet of 50 EV prototype vehicles in India from next month for developing safe and easy to use EV for Indian customers in line with Indian climatic condition and traffic situation. Regarding increasing the penetration of EV vehicles in India, it's obvious that it cannot be done without sufficient charging infrastructure development. In this regard, we look forward to proactive leadership from Indian government. In India, there is a significant number of people who are eagerly waiting to own their own car. It is said that electrical vehicle will be approximately 30% in 2030, which means huge population of vehicles would still be non-EV at that time. In order to answer to the need of better lifestyle and meeting expectations of Indian customers, also resolving environmental challenges at the same time, I think not only electrical vehicles, but it would be essential to develop hybrid and CNG vehicles too. We seek the kind support of government in terms of policy formulation. At the end, I would like to mention that in order to realize sustainable mobility society, we need to address various issues other than electrification of vehicles, such as offering a safe and the efficient mobility, etc., using information technology. I would like to make effort to resolve all these issues. I would like to conclude my speech promising that we will continue to make our best efforts for resolving these issues. Thank you very much. Our uh, next speaker lifts the spirit of innovation by constantly questioning, listening, and learning from customers, scientists, and partners. He's a doctorate in physics and has spent his whole career with Bosch. Please welcome the CEO of Bosch, Mr. Walkman Denner. Honorable Prime Minister, distinguished guests, good morning. Meeting the increasing demand for mobility will improve the lives of billions of people. At the same time, increasing pollution and urban traffic are major concerns, particularly in India. At Bosch, our vision is clear. The future of mobility should be electrified, automated, and connected. We believe that these three lines of development will allow us to achieve mobility that is accident-free, stress-free, and as emissions-free as possible. However, it's more than just an attractive vision. We know well that the path towards mobility of tomorrow must begin with concrete steps to improving traffic today. Over the next few minutes, I'll give you some concrete examples of the work we are doing at Bosch. A major concern of India's citizens and government is the country's deteriorating air quality. Our vision is a combustion engine with negligible emissions. How can we achieve this? With the introduction of BS6 emission regulations in India, particulate matter emissions from diesel and gasoline engines will be drastically reduced by the use of particulate filters. Nitrogen oxides, particularly from diesel engines, also need to be addressed. Through continuing research and development in diesel technology and applications, Bosch engineers have been able to achieve a breakthrough in reducing NOx emissions. 
solution that we recently announced. But we also need to consider the effect of CO2 on climate change. In this respect, we at Bosch argue for taking a comprehensive view, well to wheel, right from the source, in other words, instead of merely tank to wheel. It's not just the vehicle's direct emissions that count, but also the emissions from fuel production and electricity generation. With regard to their carbon footprint, combustion engines and electrical powertrains are not that far apart, nor will they be in the near future. When it comes to combustion engines, we believe the key to reduce their carbon footprint lies in synthetic or carbon neutral fuels whose manufacturing process captures CO2, and in this way, the greenhouse gas becomes a raw material from which fuel can be produced with the help of electricity from renewable sources. When it comes to electromobility, in recent years, Bosch has been continuously investing approximately 400 million euros annually. Today, more than 800,000 vehicles are on the road worldwide with Bosch technology. In the current context in India, we believe the two- and three-wheeler segment will be the first to be electrified. We are in advanced discussions with several key players to introduce our tailor-made solutions to this segment in India. However, there is not one solution that fits all. An important trend we see both globally and here in India is the coexistence of different powertrain technologies because we believe a mix of combustion engines and electrification will be needed on this road to a fully electric future. Creating the right policies will help to achieve this. A technology agnostic approach with the optimum powertrain mix has the potential not just to reduce CO2 emissions, but also to improve India's energy security. Accidents and road safety are another major challenge, which is especially relevant for India. Our research suggests that vehicles fitted with modern safety systems like anti-lock braking, ABS, or electronicity, electronic stability program, ESP, can help prevent over 10,000 road deaths a year in India. Our studies indicate that fatalities can be reduced by one third by introducing ABS in two wheelers. With this in mind, we have developed the world's smallest and lightest two-wheeler ABS, which has been specifically designed to meet the requirements of the Indian market. And this system is fully developed and manufactured locally. Today, already two million two-wheelers in India have been fitted with our ABS. And given their significant impact on improving road safety, we recommend ABS and advanced systems such as motorcycle stability control to become mandatory equipment for two-wheelers in India. But without any doubt, the key frustrations of urban mobility today are congestion and parking space scarcity. One of our aims is to bring multimodal transport systems to life, for example, by connecting two-wheelers with bus and rail networks, and we are pursuing a wide range of projects in this area. But it's important that we not only focus on vehicle technology, but also think in connected ecosystems, the vehicle as a node or a sensor in the Internet of Things. Here I would like to cite a concrete example. Following an agreement with local authorities, Bosch has entered a partnership with German cities to jointly work out solutions to improve air quality and traffic flow. And this model of public-private partnerships between companies and cities might also be worth to be considered here in India. As one of our contributions, we are currently deploying an air quality monitoring solution to Bengaluru and Pune. In closing, I would like to summarize my concrete proposals for India. We at Bosch believe that electrification, starting from two- and three-wheelers and moving towards passenger cars, buses, and light trucks are the future of sustainable urban mobility. On the road to full elect electrification, we believe a mix of combustion engines and electrification will be needed. The focus should be on making the internal combustion engine as close to zero emissions as possible and to use thin fuels to reduce their carbon footprint. And where road safety is concerned, systems such as ABS and MSC 
should be made mandatory equipment for two-wheelers and ESP for four-wheelers. Looking ahead, I believe that three things are needed to help the mobility industry achieve the ambitious targets set by the Indian government. One is a thorough, consistent, and technology-agnostic legislative framework for future powertrains. The second is an adequate time frame for meeting these targets to ensure that employment opportunities are not disrupted. And the third is an appropriate physical and digital infrastructure. At Bosch, we are eager to help bring these to life and to support the country's pioneering Make in India, Digital India, and Smart City initiatives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, with all uh, humility, I'd request all the speakers to kindly stick to the time schedule. Uh, our next uh, CEO has been called the father of Prius, the world's best-selling hybrid electric vehicle in the world. He's been a catalyst in developing a legendary company like Toyota, the chairman of Toyota and owner of his very own Priyuchan, Mr. Takeshi Uchiyamada. Namaste. Today, it's my great honor to be here and share ideas in the presence of Honorable Prime Minister Modi. Toyota defined recent situation surrounding automobile industry as once-in-century transformation. Since the time is limited, Today, I'd like to focus on electrification. First, my personal challenge, developing the 21st century vehicle. As I considered a special car for the 21st century, it became clear to me that global warming was a serious problem. Therefore, I came up with the idea to develop a revolutionary eco-car, which was hybrid car Prius launched in 1997. Current Prius is in its fourth generation. Hybrid vehicle needs no additional infrastructure. Now, hybrid vehicles are available in every category. Today, Toyota has sold over 12 million hybrid vehicles around the world, which has helped reduce 94 million tons of CO2 emissions and saved 35 million kiloliters of fuel. Second is Toyota's challenge to popularize electrified vehicles. Toyota has enormous know-how in electrification technologies with production of 24 million motors, 12 million batteries, and inverters. Toyota has succeeded to make them much smaller and enhanced in performance. Motor, battery, and inverter are core technologies for various types of electrified vehicles. By adding engine, they become hybrid vehicle. By adding bigger capacity battery with charging function, hybrid vehicle become plug-in hybrid vehicle. By enlarging battery capacity and by adding charging function on battery, they become electric vehicle. By adding fuel cell and hydrogen tank, they become fuel cell vehicle. Each country has its own energy policy and takes on challenges toward global environment in different way. Therefore, 
various electrified vehicle technologies are needed. Toyota will accelerate the pop popularization of EV in 2020. Moreover, Toyota will take electrified vehicles available for all the models by 2025. Toyota aims to sell more than 5.5 million units of electrified vehicles in 2030. EV and FCB will cover more than 1 million units. In India, Toyota also make effort to promote electrification. For this, we we'll work together with Suzuki for introducing electric and hybrid vehicles in the India, Indian market. We we'll also support the government of India to usher in the electri electrified mobilities with infrastructure development. This leads me to my third topic, the Toyota Environmental Challenge 2050, which we set in October in 2015. We aim to reduce average new vehicle CO2 emissions by 90%. And our objective is to have zero CO2 emissions at all Toyota manufacturing plants. We also positively promote a lot of activities in India. We intend to take up challenge to realize bright future for children and the society where people and people and nature coexist. For this, we humbly ask for your understanding and support. Danyawad. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, our next speaker is a trained yachtsman and an accomplished player of the clarinet, saxophone, and accordion. He also drives the world of fourth industrial revolution. Please welcome the Chief Executive Officer of ABB, Mr. Ulrich Spesshofer. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Prime Minister Modi, distinguished guests. It is an honor to participate in this very, very interesting summit, and it's, I would like to warmly thank you for the opportunity to do so. E-mobility is today recognized as one of the changing forces in the world, and it will change transport on the rail, on the road, and on the seas. This transition will not take place overnight, but we need to decisively drive it in a way that we ensure we realize the benefits whilst at the same time enabling technology development. I would like to comment positively the Indian government for its ambitious, enlightened vision for transforming the transport system to e-mobility, the bottom-up approach that you have chosen to really target two- and three-wheelers, vehicles, and buses and railways used by hundreds of millions of Indians is an inspired way to drive and encourage the shift to e-mobility. We at ABB are a type pioneering technology leader that supports technology de development in all relevant spaces of utilities, industry, and transport and infrastructure. Here in India, with our 11,000 colleagues, we are supporting the development of e-mobility and infrastructure since more than 100 years. When we look at the field of e-mobility, I would like to give you technology examples that will prosper and support the development of India in the field of e-mobility. Take rail. Rail electrification is very often taken as a given 
but today we still have too many diesel on the, on the locomotives in the rails. It is clear we cannot only save fuel consumption and transform from diesel to electric, we can also significantly reduce the environmental impact by doing so and by localizing our activities here in India since many years we are contributing in that field. When we talk about e-mobility, we should also talk about ships and harbors because there we see an enormous amount of con uh, ex emissions in the world. Using e-mobility, using electric technologies in ships can save the fuel consumption by up to 40%, whilst improving agility and ensuring we have a safe operations. Many Indians go to work and commute by buses. The new flash charging technologies on buses make them lighter, we need less battery, and we have the opportunity to transport people through the cities in a convenient way. The localized offering here in India makes really a difference in that context. And it's very clear there will be no battery operated transport without charging infrastructure. And I'm particularly proud that our team that has started up these activities seven years ago is today globally leading in this field. Today, we are launching a world record technology here in India. Outside, you see a technology that we brought first to the world in the Hanover Fair 2018 this year. And I still go back to the fond memories of the Hanover Fair 2015. Where I met Prime Minister Modi there. With this technology, we have solved the issue now for India to fast charge cars. Nobody wants to spend too much time in charging. Everybody wants to convenience. With this new technology, we can charge in eight minutes for 200 kilometers. So what does it take to make e-mobility happen? And what are the elements that we need to make sure that we provide? It's an integrated system. And only the integration will give the world the benefits in terms of cost, but also in terms of environmental impact in the way that we want. We need affordable electric cars here in India, and it's fantastic to see how our local partners here are coming out with e-rickshaws, two-wheelers, and very affordable buses in this environment. We need to have the charging infrastructure, and many of the e-rickshaw visions are not realized because people have to charge at home. In a recent project in a city here in India, we installed combined solar activity and EV charging to make that happen. The Indian distribution grid on the power side is needed to be reinforced. Fast charging means we need a stable distribution grid. And here we need to use the right technologies to get there. And last but not least, India's plans to push renewable in the, uh, energy are a key building block to make sustainable e-mobility and to end happening. I would like to thank you to have this opportunity to be here today, and I would like to encourage India to go on its path to ensure we're using technology to the better of the world that we can run India without consuming the soil of India. So let's write this future together. Thank you very much. Our next speaker has done some remarkable work and some unique work on the world of mobility. He was the first woman chief information officer of Ford. Please welcome the president of mobility at Ford, Ms. Mercy Clavon. Honorable Prime Minister of India, distinguished gathering, ladies and gentlemen, I first like to applaud Niti Ayog and Amitabh Khan for the efforts in organizing this very important summit. I'm honored to be here with you. Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th century belonged to automobiles. Cities around the world were designed around in four cars, with little consideration given to user friendly spaces. In fact, public spaces and parks were sacrificed for parking lots. Today's cities around the globe 
take up only 2% of the Earth's surface. However, they house over 50% of the world's population. They're responsible for consuming over three quarters of all the energy produced and 80% of global gas emissions. Together with China and Nigeria, India will count for 35% of the projected growth of the urban population between the years 2018 and 2050. Personal mobility has long been a liberating force to progress human progress and affect our very existence. However, personal mobility is under threat. Threats from overcrowded cities, overburdened mass transit, congestion, and increasing levels of pollution. I know the dialogue today will help India be a role model and leader to improve accessibility and the quality of life. To do this, we must work together to fundamentally redesign today's transportation systems so cities can effectively absorb growing populations and still maintain freedom of movement. For a city to be truly smart, it should be green sustainable and it should be about people, emphasizing quality of life. In India itself, the government is developing 100 smart cities across the country that are efficient, sustainable, and driven by citizen planning, and also adapting 500 portions of existing city centers. At Ford, we realize that collective effort is needed to address mobility needs. And today, our city solutions group in India is collaborating with various city stakeholders to help solve congestion and improve the way we move. Flexibility and responsiveness are changing ways of commuting. Alternative modes of transportation we offer globally at Ford include our chariot shuttle service, which operates in a number of US cities in London, and our go-ride service, which is a human-centered, non-emergency medical transport service. Ford's testing of shuttle services in Asia and India is part of our journey. We have launched a pilot for employee services that have garnered over 70,000 rides today, and we're moving this to other companies as well in Chennai. Today, however, most transportation services operate individually. We believe that in the future, you will not only see services and transportation options connected to each other, but also connecting with cities and their infrastructure to deliver more personalized and efficient services. At Ford, we are aggressively focused on connectivity and how we can use data to connect transportation services and improve experiences and movement. We acquired an innovative startup based in Silicon Valley called Autonomic. Autonomic has developed a cloud-based platform to connect and empower tomorrow's mobility system. The cloud-based platform, or the TMC, is an open, secure platform that will provide the building box for smart mobility applications, such as routing self-driving cars, managing large-scale fleets, and we use this today to manage our own fleets. At Ford, we're working on, our, on how smart city vehicles and autonomous vehicles will talk to infrastructure, from stoplights, traffic signs, to cyclists and pedestrians. The way the world moves is experiencing its biggest disruption since the Model T rolled off the assembly line in the early 20th century. Mobility challenges today cannot be treated in isolation. Use of sensor technology will mean cars, traffic lights, and the rest of transport ecosystem will constantly communicate with each other. The change is coming, and in fact, it's here now. It will demand collaboration among automotive and technology companies, but governments, local leaders, and citizens. It will take all of us working together. Therefore, with this help of this forum, I invite cities and states in India to work with Ford to co-create the mobility solutions of tomorrow. 115 years ago, Ford Motor Company changed the way the world moved, and we have the responsibility to do it again. We hope you will join us. Thank you. With great uh, respect, I'd request the remaining speakers to kindly stick to the time schedule. Let me welcome uh, a person who provides leadership and vision to the world of Tata's, the CEO of Tata Motors, Mr. Gwinter Butchek. Namaste, India. 
Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modaji, dear ministers, respected ministers, esteemed dignitaries, and my dear friends. There are indeed, as it has already been mentioned, not that many opportunities to get it together political leaders, business leaders, and experts uh, from across all kinds of sectors to actually talk about an important subject as it is the future of mobility, the future of mobility in India. And I would like to take the opportunity on behalf of the industry to actually thank Niti Ayok for taking the lead in organizing this event and providing us a platform to discuss this important subject. At the same point of time, as I feel honored uh, being here on stage in addressing, addressing this esteemed uh, a group uh, of people, I would like to put it in context, not only in the context of what does it mean to Tata Motors, what does it mean even more so to the Tata Group, in order to put it in context of India. India, as a shining star amongst the global economies, has at the same point of time a unique opportunity to be the rising star in the future of mobility. Why am I saying so? There are a couple of unique contributing factors in India which support my statement. We have a unique situation as far as the population is concerned because uh, we see changing computer trend, commu uh, uh, consumer trends where consumers become more demanding and where the demand shows us the need to change uh, in order to provide future sustainable mobility. It's about rising per capita. It's about the millennials or the digital natives, as we normally call the new generation in India. We have a progressive policing. We have a government uh, with a mission which has given very clear direction in the field of smart cities, and smart mobility fits into the envelope of smart cities. Make in India has been very strongly encouraged, and Swaraj Bharat has become one of the key themes in the last uh, years. We enjoy the benefit of having, of having very stringent auto norms, closing the gap uh, to the global standards, as we enjoy preferential and released uh, tax regimes to really boost uh, the business to higher levels. I make the reference to GST, fame, uh, FDI, uh, etc. And, as has already been mentioned in the first speech, a strong encouragement uh, of public-private partnerships as possibly one of the ways forward uh, in order, order to master the challenges. And the automotive industry is strong because the automotive industry has always been the economy the engine of the economy. Uh, we are poised to become the third largest one uh, in the world. We have increasing contribution to the GDP, uh, and we actually drive the jobs and the skilling movements in India. Having said that, we tend to translate it in very simple terms. When we talk, we usually talk about the triple bottom line. The social aspect, very important in India, uh, financial and environment. But allow me to actually add a dimension to it, because the what is the triple bottom line. This event shows that it's much more important to pay attention to the how. And the how is what uh, I did also mention at a different event yesterday at IST, not Indian Standard Time, about an approach that needs to be inclusive, that needs to be sustainable, and that needs to be transformational. Having said that, the question is, what is the answer that comes from the automotive industry? We normally say that's all going to be covered by ACES, Autonomous, Connected, uh, Electric and Shared. If we take uh, the Indian reality, I would like to call for a new CES. Not for a CES as a new tax levy, for CES, which actually stands for Connected, Electric, shared and safe, because the journey of the future mobility starts by providing a safer environment uh, for mobility and then being supported by connected, electric and shared. 
So in order to do this, we need to leverage the data and the technology uh, in order to really explore the innovative uh, solutions uh, for mobility. And we even have to reconsider the way we do the business and need to embark uh, on new business models. We need to be open to build new partnerships through a collaborative approach. And this is the essence of the MOVE uh, event. So welcome to the MOVE, which actually puts the framework in place and provides a discussion platform for the future of mobility. Thank you. Our next speaker is the world's largest producer of cycles, and he believes that the future of mobility lies in cycling. Mr. Pankaj Munjal. I would uh, request him to be extremely brief. Honorable Prime Minister of India, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, my talk is a lot different, it will be a lot different. It will include the billion people that we all are. It's an honor to be standing here and talk on the subject that I love so much. Not that I'm born in this family associated with the wheels for the last 60 years, but my business can't go against the grain of the society. India consumes 35 lakh cars, two and a half crore motorcycles, but only 1.5 crore cycles. This is not in line with the income pyramid and the global trends. Ladies and gentlemen, 32 crore people walk every day to work, to school, and to commute because they can't afford a cycle. A study reveals that if 10% of them get wheels, GDP goes up by one, one percentage point. Owning a cycle is like a business. In a village, one delivers milk to the milk plant. He transports clothes that his wife stitches to the store close by and makes a living. In modern India, we face four social issues, urban congestion, urban pollution, fossil fuel depletion, and health going down. A bicycle remedies them all. What does the future of transportation look like? I'm sorry, gentlemen, sitting here, you're not going to get amused. Surely the solution is not more poor people will drive cars. Even if the car is clean, it still creates a jam. One drives a car to the gym for spinning a cycle. We love our own car, but blame the other for creating traffic. <laughs> Prime Minister, sir, the youth of the country looks up to you as a role model, guiding them for a bright tomorrow. You are identified with large intervention plans such as Swachh Bharat and Swast Bharat, where the bicycling can play a small role, meaningful role in that. I feel very excited to share today. Hero has launched the new e-bike, which you should please see outside. I met the Prime Minister in England some time back. I was very excited. He asked me what is special. I didn't have an answer. But I shared with him now, this costs seven paise per kilometer. One, one fiftieth of that of a motorcycle. One by 50. Is a humble bicycle and an e-bike the next big solution for the intracity commute? I submit it is. Hero makes 5% of the world production and is the world's number one. And I'm going to have a goal to make all my 6 million bikes that we make more and more electric. Sir, to sum up, we need three things. Microfinance. Cycle needs a microfinance safety on the roads, and integrate last mile connectivity. With these, we can try and aim for that 1% extra GDP. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker runs a company that is the largest car producer in China. 
He is a distinguished Politburo member of the Communist Party of China and took over as the president of Saic Motor Corporation in 2014. I welcome on stage Mr. Chen Zi Zin. Honorable Prime Minister Modi and the senior government officials, delegates, distinguished guests, gentlemen, Namaste, hello everyone. I'm honored to be invited to address MOVE Global Mobility Summit here today. I'm so amazed at the rich history and the brilliant culture of India. And I can see the great development of the India economy and the society in recent years and the leadership of the Prime Minister Modi. As an important emerging market in the world, India has a huge opportunities and business potentials. Therefore, Sakamoto and many other global companies are paying close attention to this great country. Saikamoto is the largest listed automobile group in China. Last year, Saikamoto sells 6.993 million vehicles, and our sales volume has been the top one for 12 years in China. In the 2018 Fortune Global 500 list, Saikamoto is ranked 36 while a revenue of the 128.80 billion US dollars. There are two key reasons for Saika Motors is leading position in Chinese market. On the one hand, we keep up strategy to the world and insist on the win-win cooperation. And on the other hand, we insist on the making innovations globally. Saika Moto believes the global auto industry is facing a fundamental change with the increasing pressure of the energy and the environmental issues, as well as the breakthrough in the new technologies like new energy, internet, artificial intelligence, big data, and the cloud computing at the factory. The traditional auto industry and the very chair is the facing transformation. Vehicles will be changed to clean and efficient mobility internet terminals. Sakimoto is advancing globally, and our target is to become a global provider of products and mobility services. Therefore, we take the future trends of the global auto industry into the consideration. In 2016, 17, Saika Moto established the MG Moto India Private Limited and decided to introduce the MG brand to India. MG, as a legendary British brand, is the sure to work, to work well with the India customers. And we also would provide better mobility products and the service to India customers. The first product will, will be an SUV and planned for the launch in the first half of the next year. By 2020, Cycle Motor plans to invest more than 500 million US dollars in India. And we had already established a supply park at the Halo plant in order to have a localized four value chair business system. And the cycle motor fully supports the government's desertion of the new energy vehicle. And we are willing to take the active part in it from the beginning. Here, I would like to announce that in the near future, MG Motor India will launch the globally competitive the pure electric vehicle products in India to make our contribution to India's energy and environmental strategies. Of course, the development of the new energy vehicle needs the government's strong support in terms of politics, technical standard, 
As a part of the, our con commitment to this market, MG Motor India will respond to make in India initiative and bring our latest technologies, products, and service to India customers. We will always pay attention to the safety, innovation, and women empowerment, and actively undertake the social responsibilities. MG Motor India. We are strive to be a strategic partner of the sustainable development of India economic and the society. Once again, I would like to thank to India government for giving SIC Moto this great opportunity. I believe this will be a great beginning of MG's journey in India. Like you said, Prime Minister Modi, Sabka Sabt Sabka Vikas. Thank you. Uh, finally, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the youngest CEO in this hall. He's a self-made entrepreneur. He does not own a car. He always takes a Ola. Ladies and gentlemen, Bhavisha Garwal. Good morning, everybody. It's an absolute honor to be sharing the dais with such eminent personalities. It's exciting to see Niti Aayog organize the MOVE Summit, recognizing the potential for mobility innovation to be a driver for employment and economic growth. Ola is proud to be associated with this first-of-its-kind initiative, and I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to all. Nations are built on the dreams of its visionary leaders. Our Prime Minister Modi ji's vision for India of sustainable development for all empowering women and enabling employment opportunity for millions are central to realizing India's true potential. Our former Prime Minister, late Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji, very rightly said, roads and highways are our bhagya rekha, lines of destiny. Mobility as a whole today is truly our bhagya rekha. Today, India is the world's fastest growing economy and the youngest workforce. Growing faster than our economy is the aspiration of our youth and our 1.3 billion people. Along with the challenge of job creation for all, we have to tackle the challenge of pollution and congestion that slow, slow down econ economic activity. Mobility can power this transformation. A new way of being mobile, a new move, is central to achieving this. From previous centuries, mobility has enabled more personal freedom and societal progress. The invention of the car, the airplane, the bullet train, the flying car, the electric car, all have captivated our collective imaginations as society. The future of mobility globally and in India cannot be a mere extension of the way we do things currently. Using technology to our advantage is our chance to leapfrog in terms of mobility and open more economic opportunity. Our own special problems of urbanization in India will give us insights that will also be globally relevant. Pollution-free travel, evaluating and managing road conditions, urban planning, first and last mile commute, safer rides and roads, all these are the challenges that technology can and should solve. Ola, a fledgling eight-year-old company, now provides mobility solutions to hundreds of millions in India, Australia, and the UK. We serve over one billion customers a year. Without Ola, this would have meant an additional three million vehicles on the road in India daily. Women take thousands of rides to their work, offer the other errands daily on our autos and cabs. Their economic freedom can be enhanced with safer mobility options. We have more than 10 lakh driver partners, most of them self-employed. A vast majority empowered to build their own shelters, having now the means to, uh, to own their own homes. The future of employment is micro-entrepreneurship, and we can create crores of direct and indirect livelihoods to deliver mobility to our citizens. Ola is working with the entire ecosystem to enable a faster transition to electric mobility and solve our pollution challenge. Today, people from across the globe look upon India for innovative and clever solutions to address their local challenges. I'm confident, sir, that in the 21st century, we will be able to get India the place in the world it deserves. For us, Ola is more than a platform or an organization. It's a mission to build mobility for a billion people, and we look forward to working together with every stakeholder to realize this mission. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavish. Uh, it's been incredible to hear such diverse viewpoints such distinct perspectives of the various pieces 
that make up the puzzle of mobility, distinct and yet united in the articulation of a vision for a better world. We now come to a part of the ceremony uh, that has had a lot of intellectual and academic work over the last several months. The Honorable Prime Minister had directed us to consult various stakeholders, and we'll be presenting these reports to the Honorable Prime Minister. May I now request uh, the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, to kindly receive these reports from the distinguished writers. May I also request the Honorable Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog and the Honorable Minister to kindly escort the Honorable Prime Minister. The first report is Transforming India's Mobility Towards a Policy Perspective. May I request Mr. Jan Majai Sinha and Mr. Anil Srivastava to present the report to the Honorable Prime Minister. The next report is Zero Emission Vehicle Towards a Policy Framework. May I request Mr. Sitapati Chanda and Mr. Ashok Junjunwala to present the report. The third report is Goods on the Move, Efficiency and Sustainability, sustainability in Indian Logistics. Mr. Amri Lovins, Mr. Abhishek Kumar Saxena, and Mr. Lav Bhardwaj, please. The fourth report is Data-Driven Mobility, Improving Passenger Transportation Through Data. Mr. Clay Stranger, Ms. Shikha Jual, and Ms. Sweta Sharma will present these reports. Moving Forward Together, Enabling Shared Mobility in India, report prepared by Ishita Kandre and Mr. O.P. Agarwal. So we have a whole set of intellectual work which has been done, which will be put up on the net, and which will be made available to all of you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we look forward to the time which we have been waiting for, the address by the Honorable Prime Minister of India. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, may I request you to kindly welcome the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. Excellencies, distinguished delegates from across the world, ladies and gentlemen, 
I welcome you all to the Global Mobility Summit. MOVE, the name of this summit, captures the spirit of India today. Indeed, India is on the move. Our economy is on the move. We are the world's fastest growing major economy. Our cities and towns are on the move. We are building 100 smart cities. Our infrastructure is on the move. We are building roads, airports, rail lines, and ports at a quick pace. Our goods are on the move. The goods and service tax has helped us rationalize supply chains and warehouses networks. Our reforms are on the move. We have made India an easier place to do business. Our lives are on the move. Families are getting homes, toilets, mock-free LPG cylinders, bank accounts, and loans. Our youth are on the move. We are fastest emerging at the startup hub of the world. India is moving ahead with new energy, urgency, and purpose. Friends, we all know that mobility has been key to the progress of humanity. The world is now in the middle of a new mobility revolution. It is therefore important to understand mobility as a wider construct. Mobility is a key driver of the economy. Better mobility reduces the burden of travel and transportation and can boost economic growth. It is already a major employer and can create the next generation of jobs. Mobility is central to urbanization. Motorized personal vehicles require ever-growing road, parking, and traffic infrastructure. Mobility is a key element of ease of living. It occupies the minds of virtually every person in time spent to get school and work, in frustration with traffic, in the cost of visiting family or moving goods, in access to public transport, in the quality of air our children breathe, in concerns around the safety of travel. Mobility is critical to pre preserving our planet. Road, transport, accounts for one-fifth of global carbon dioxide emissions. This threatens to chalk cities and raise global temperatures. Creating a mobility ecosystem that is in sync with nature is the need of the hour. Mobility is the next frontier in our fight against climate change. Better mobility 
can provide for better jobs, smarter infrastructure, and improve the quality of life. It can also reduce costs, expand economic activity, and protect the planet. Thus, the mobility sector impacts larger public outcomes. Mobility, especially the digitization of mobility, is disruptive. It has big potential for innovation and it has been setting a sharing pace. Already, people are calling taxis on their phones, sharing bicycles in cities, buses are running or clean energy, cars are going electric. In India, we have been laying emphasis on mobility. We have doubled our pace of construction of highways. We have re-energized our rural road building program. We are promoting fuel efficient and cleaner fuel vehicles. We have developed low cost air connectivity in underserved regions. We are also starting operations on hundreds of new air routes. We are pushing waterways in addition to traditional modes of like rail and road. We are reducing travel distance in our cities by efficient location of homes, schools, and offices. We have also started data-driven interventions such as intelligent traffic management systems. However, we also need to encourage pedestrians and cycling by taking steps to ensure their safety and priority. Friends, in a rapidly transforming mobility paradigm, India has some inherent strength and comparative advantages. Our starting point in fresh, we have little of the legacy of resource blind mobility. We have fewer vehicles per capita than other, other major economies. Thus, we don't, do not carry much of the baggage of other economies that were built on the back of private car ownership. This gives us the window of opportunity to create an all new seamless mobility ecosystem. On the technology front, our strengths lie in information technology, big data, digital payments, and the internet enable shared economy. These elements are increasingly becoming the drivers of the global future of mobility. Our unique identity program, Aadhaar, and its India stack ecosystem had laid down a comprehensive public digital infrastructure. It had digitally empowered 850 million of our citizens. India can demonstrate how such digital infrastructure can be combined with new mobility business models. Our renewable energy push will ensure that the environmental benefits of electric mobility can be fully realized. We plan to draw 175 gigawatt watts of energy from renewables by 2022. 
we are already the fifth largest producer of solar energy in the world we are also the sixth largest producer of renewable energy we have also championed the cause of solar energy globally to the international solar alliance we have a fast growing manufacturing base especially in the automotive sector we also have a large digitally literate young population this provides millions of educated minds skilled hands and aspirational dream for powering the future therefore i'm convinced that india is best place globally to be an early mover in the mobility economy my vision for the future of mobility in india is based on seven c's common connected convenient congestion free charge clean and cutting edge common public transport must be the cornerstone of our mobility initiatives new business models driven by digitization are reinventing the current paradigm big data is enabling smarter decision making by better understanding our partners and needs our focus must also go beyond cars to other vehicles such as scooters and rickshaws large segments of the developing world depend on these vehicles for mobility connected connected mobility implies integration of geographies as well as modes of transport the internet enabled connected sharing economy is emerging as the fulcrum of mobility we must leverage the full potential of vehicle pulling and other innovative technical solution to improve private vehicle utilization people from villages should be able to bring their produce to the cities with ease and efficiency convenient convenient mobility means safe affordable and accessible for all section of the society this includes the elderly the women and the spiritually able we need to ensure that public transport is preferred to private modes of travel congestion free mobility is critical to check the economic and environment cost of congestion hence there should be emphasis on ending bottlenecks of networks this would result in fewer traffic jams and lower levels of stress for people traveling it would also lead to greater efficiency in logistics and freight charge mobility is the way forward we want to drive investments across the value chain from batteries to smart charging to electric vehicle manufacturing india's business leaders and manufacturers are now poised to develop and deploy breakthrough battery technology the india space research organization uses one of the best battery system to run satellites in space other institution can partner with isro to develop cost effective and efficient battery system for electric cars we want to build india as a driver in electric vehicles we will soon put in place 
a stable policy regime around electric and other alternative fuel vehicles. Policies will be designed as a win-win for all and enable huge opportunities in the automotive sector. Clean mobility powered by clean energy is our most powerful weapon in our fight against climate change. This means a pollution-free, clean drive leading to clean air and better living standards for our people. We should champion the idea of clean kilometers. This could be achieved through biofuels, electric or solar charging. Electric vehicles in particular can complement our investments in renewable energy. We will do whatever it takes because this is our commitment to our heritage and our promise to future generations. Mobility is like the internet in its early days. It is cutting edge. It is the next big innovation sector. The move hack and pitch to move events organized over the past week show how young minds are coming up with creative solutions. Entrepreneurs should see mobility as a sector with immense opportunity for innovation and growth. It is a sector where innovation can help solve problems for public good. Friends, I'm convinced that the mobility revolution is an enabler of our growth and development. When India transforms mobility, it benefits one-fifth of mankind. It also becomes a scaled success story for others to replicate. Let us build a template for the world to adapt. In conclusion, let me particularly appeal to the youth of India. My young dynamic friends, this is your opportunity to lead a new era of innovation. This is the future. This is the sector that will absorb everything from those with doctorates to engineers to drivers to mechanics. We should embrace this revolution early and leverage our strengths to lead the mobility innovation ecosystem both for ourselves and for others. The talent and technology assembled here today has the capability of making a transformative mobility shift for India and the world. This shift will be based on caring for our world and sharing with others. To quote from our ancient scriptures, Om Sahana Vautu Sahana Vunaktu Sahaviryam Karabhavahai Tejasvinam Vadevatamastu Ma Vidvishavahai which means, may we all be protected, may we all be nourished, may we work together with great energy, may our intellect sharpen. Friends, I look forward to see what we can do together. The summit is just beginning. Let us move ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, I request you all to be kindly seated while the Honorable Prime Minister departs and the next session begins. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. दो दिवसीय विश्व मोबिलिटी सम्मेलन का उद्घाटन किया है और साथ ही साथ उन्होंने भारत की युवा शक्ति को 